Welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, your sanctuary with retreat experts, where we spill the tea on retreat success. Here we dive into crafting transformational guest experiences, talk about how to avoid pitfalls, and unlock marketing secrets. Whether you're a seasoned guru or a budding enthusiast, we've got the inside scoop for you. Join us as we learn how to flourish in this magical world of retreats. Hey guys, welcome to the Retreat Leaders Podcast, formerly the Happy Hour Podcast. This is Shannon. I am excited to have another incredible guest today. This guest is going to tell you all about herself because I am never the best at that. I think we are all really good at talking about ourselves a little better than somebody else doing it. And so welcome, Lorena, to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Shannon. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so I am a mindset and manifestation coach working with ambitious women, mainly female entrepreneurs and female leaders to really help them overcome any mindset blocks that they have so they can really step into their purpose and manifest a life wilder than their dreams. Oh, yummy. Because Mm. let me tell you, we chatted just a tiny bit right before we started recording. And I think this is, I personally think after the many times I've, or the many years I've been doing this and having my own retreat center, I'm telling you, I feel like this is the reason quote unquote, someone fails is a mindset block. It's limiting Mm. beliefs. It's just, it's energetics. And so before we really dive into that, tell us a little bit about your background as far as like, what led you to this point? Yeah. So, oh gosh, where do I even start? There's so much that led up to it. Well, really what really led me up to this was I've always been really into manifestation for the past 13 years or so. And I really struggled in my own journey with self-worth, with confidence. And um, I overcame an eating disorder when I was in my early 20s as well. And that really stemmed from not feeling good enough in a lot of ways. And that overcoming that sparked this interest of, you know, I want to help other women to overcome not feeling good enough to feeling like, you know, they're stuck in people pleasing or seeking external validation, or maybe what they desire is not available for them. And through my own journey, that was a one I had, but it was, it was a bit more around like fitness and wellness back then. I kind of fell away from that for a bit, went into the corporate world. And yeah, I fell into events planning, which was my background in nine to five for quite a few years. And I actually really loved events planning. It was something I'm a purple person. I love bringing community together. So that was somewhere I really, really enjoyed doing. But one of the biggest things was I was never really able to get ahead of my career to where I wanted to be. I felt like I was hustling. I was working, trying to climb the corporate ladder, but I was never really fully getting ahead. Now, Fast forward a few years, I left the nine to five world, went traveling for a while, found myself, started manifesting the life I was looking for. And um, yeah, I moved to the UK in 2019 to kind of still keep this travel life that's, you know, a little bit against the grain. I was really about living life on your own terms. And um, I was still working in the events area and I was working for this really, really toxic, like very corporate company in, in London. And, you know, we were only told you're only as good as your last event. And it was just a really not a great environment. And uh, it really brought up so much anxiety and overwhelm and stress. And I was faced with a lot of things that I had struggled with in the past. Anyways, the pandemic happened, right? And of course, events was one of the first things to go. Now, I'd always wanted to start my own business. I'd always wanted to do something different. I saw myself in doing something, helping people, but I didn't know how to make it happen. I lacked that self-belief. So finally, here was an opportunity to do it. You know, I wasn't getting any lower than being unemployed at that sense. You know, I was working part time in a bakery to get by. And I was like, you know what? Now's my chance. I want to make this happen. So I started doing an entrepreneurship journey, got into virtual assistance. And yeah, from there, I went into retreat planning. I brought in the events planning, started working with business coaches and helping to plan different retreats. And then Fast forward, I kind of transitioned into coaching and doing manifestation and mindset and confidence coaching because that's really what was lighting me up. And now I'm leading my own events and leading my own retreats. And yeah, so it's been a whole lot that's led up to this point, to be honest. Yeah. Hey, retreat leaders, are your retreats the hidden gems of the travel world just waiting to be discovered? Well, it's time to shine a spotlight on them, introducing the ultimate guide you've been waiting for. Our free guide, Top 11 Tips for Building an Email List for you, the retreat leaders. Imagine an email list packed with eager attendees, hanging on to your every word and ready to book at the click of a button. We share the blueprint to creating a list that sells. Don't miss out on the action. Learn how to connect deeply with your audience. 
boost your bookings, and create a buzz that fills every retreat. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, these 11 tips are your secret weapon to success. Visit retreatleaderlistbuilding.com now to grab your free copy and start building an email list that sells out your retreats. See, I like that because I think a lot of people, honestly, that especially those who are just new getting into the business, and even those who've been doing it for maybe a minute, they think that like it's like all of a sudden someone's just hosting retreats successfully. That there wasn't oh, like this, there wasn't like this pathway there. And the pathway doesn't look the same for any of us. Like literally none of us probably hosting retreats. It's looked the same, right? It's just a pathway. It looks different. It could be have a corporate background. It could have still a self-employed background. It could be whatever that there's all these different ways that could lead us up to this point. And so I love that you shared your story of how you got to that point. And I love that you took the leap during COVID because listen, I tell people, and this is not at all minimizing the devastation that COVID did at all. However, I feel like in some ways and in some cases, and probably more than we give credit for, it was a shitty wrapped gift, right? It really Mm -hmm. propelled some of us into directions that we would never have done had that horrible thing not happened, right? And so that's the way I try to look at it is with gratitude. Because if I go down the rabbit hole of all the other stuff, it's like, it's, there's nothing we can do about that stuff. It's already happened. So I love that you took that leap and you're like, look, I'm going to do it. And that was a big mindset shift for you, I'm sure. Oh, a hundred percent. Because before I felt like I was always kind of dabbling and wanting to start something, but I felt like I had to like stay in that safe nine to five and all things. But when you're nine to five, it's just ripped right from under you. And, you know, like I said, I, I had nothing to lose. That was basically my mindset. And I was like, here's the thing. How can I make this work? And um, yeah, like the virtual assistant stuff was doing really well. Like I said, I was starting to get into the virtual events. And then that led to retreats that always been very much into the spirituality, the manifestation energetic. So starting to kind of dabble in that area. And I was like, oh my God, online retreats started happening. So that's what we started working on. Then it started turning to supporting people on their in-person, very much the focus on like women's wellness retreats, a couple of corporate retreats. So it's been really amazing. And yeah, like I said, that transitioned into you know, there's a different mindset shift as well when you've been the events planner for someone else to then go on to hosting your own and planning your own and showing up in that host area versus like the planner. It's a completely different identity shift. So that was definitely another next step evolution I had to take as well along along that journey. Yep. Another mindset mindset shift. I can speak English. <laughs> do you still do event planning or do you exclusively now do your own events? Yeah. Now I do my own events as well. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And totally side note, how do you like living in the UK? Where did you come from? And if you said that, I apologize. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm from Canada originally. I'm from Toronto and I've moved to the UK five years ago now, which is pretty crazy. I'm just actually applying for my permanent residency now and uh, making that whole transition. So I actually really enjoy it. I love traveling. So for, it makes sense to be here because I get to travel Europe really easily, can do those like weekend trips and everything's so close by. So I really love that. And I like that feeling of feeling like a foreigner kind of in a different place. Like when I'm in Canada, beautiful country. I love Canada, but I don't feel like I'm exotic, but even though I'm (laughs) UK is not really exotic, but I feel kind of exotic here. (laughs) Oh, no, I love the UK. Um, One of my favorite places I've been is London. And I know it's super touristy. And I know all the whatever, but like, I just absolutely fell in love with the energy of London. And of course, I loved Italy, because I have a lot of family in Italy. And that was more of a familial thing versus Italy itself, although Italy is amazing. But for sure, London was one of my favorite places that I went just to go. So I love that. Okay, let's talk about mindsets that a retreat host needs to have. Like, let's, I'm just going to let you take over because I really want to just hear what your thoughts are on how we get rid of these limiting beliefs. How do we build up our confidence? Because I truly believe that is the number one reason why someone's retreat is not quote unquote successful. Yeah, I definitely, definitely can feel that. Like one of the things that I see a lot with some of the women I've worked with, and a lot of them are wanting to host events or retreats and certain things like that as well, is the fear of being seen the fear of rejection, the fear of fully stepping into their purpose and owning, you know, because the retreats often depending on on the topic of the retreat or the the industry, but you know, a lot of it's because it's around healing, it's around helping, it's maybe being a light worker or a healer. And there is a different identity that stepping in. You're really putting yourself forward. You're putting your passion out there for other people to see. It's very vulnerable, right? So when you're hosting this and you're sharing this intimate part of yourself with others, your gifts, there's so much you're like, here's everything 
now let me host this space for you. But if no one's signing up, and then you're going to have that feeling of like, you can make it about you, right? And take it of like, okay, well, I failed, or there's this fear, like, oh, I'm not good enough. All these limiting beliefs can come forward. Or like, oh, I'm not successful enough to be a retreat, like to lead these retreats, or you've seen other people comparison. I mean, I could go on and on and on, right? There's the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of losing out on on potential money as well, right? Because retreats do have a lot of upfront costs often with the venues and things like that. So we are hoping to sell out and make that profit, but also create that impact. So there's so many as well, but really that's why the mindset is so important is to identify those limiting beliefs and like address them head on, right? We're always going to have some sort of limiting belief that's going to pop up. Self-awareness is step one. So like, don't look at it like, oh my God, I have a limiting belief. I can't do it. Like, absolutely no. You can build the confidence. You can move through it. But it's about, okay, what's the resistance? This is the vision I have. What do I want to make happen? What's my vision for the retreat? How do I see it going? Right? What's the best case scenario? Okay, what's there now? Is there any beliefs around it's not possible or resistance? Now it's time to clear the resistance. I'd say that is like such a priority. The energetics, the mindset, the embodiment. That is going to be such a priority just as much as the strategy, the taking action to sell out, the promoting, all of that as well. It's like that 80-20 rule, right? It's our inner world creates our outer world. And that's felt. Hey, it's Shannon here. I'm just popping in really quickly to ask a big favor. Would you pause the show and go review it for us? please. Reviews really help us to be able to get more guests and more experts on the show to help you transform your retreats. So if you wouldn't mind pausing and leaving us a review, that would mean everything. And if you're not already subscribed, do that too. Okay. I love this. So I'm going to grab it and hopefully not fall because I'm on my walking pad. But my, <laughs> Don't fall, my, please. <laughs> wouldn't that be funny? And so my manifestation journal that I absolutely love, everybody's on audio, so they won't actually get to see this. But if you want the link to my favorite manifestation journal, just let me know. But today, so it's a daily thing. And then every now and then it has like a page just with a thought on it. And so today's thought that I got to, which just resonated with me, if I can open it up while I'm walking, is to me what you're saying. And it's like the universe will manifest whatever you believe. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So we manifest a lot of people think we just manifest from our thoughts, which a lot of these new age spirituality books, like the secret, yes. all tell us, but like that can cause people to get in the state of panic. Be like, I can't think anything negative. So then they beat themselves up if there's a negative and it's this constant push pull plus toxic positivity, emotional bypassing. Absolutely. No, like get rid of that thought. We manifest from our beliefs and what we feel worthy and deserving of. And the great thing is you can shift your beliefs and this is going on a subconscious level, right? And when we have certain beliefs about how we perceive the world, how we view ourselves, then naturally our thoughts are going to shift as well. We can start to cultivate more of an abundant, more of a limitless possibility, seeing ourselves as this capable, successful, you know, incredible retreat house who's leading these amazing transformative experiences naturally, we're going to start taking action and identifying. And those we're going to start aligning opportunities, people are going to feel our energy magnetism, right? Law of attraction requires law of action, law of vibration as well. Yummy. Okay. Can you give someone just a taste of a practical application that they could do to help remove some of these blocks? Yeah, I mean, there's so many gratitude is such an incredible way as well, right? Because we're either in contraction or we're in expansion, right? We want to be in expansion where that's where we are in that limitless abundance and that abundant mindset, or we're in like that fear-based where that's where the limiting beliefs of that contraction are. And when we are, you can actually like feel yourself contracting, right? Our energy is going in. So we're blocking things from coming through. But when we're in this expansive state, we're much more aligned and open for opportunities. And that is going to be like where the universe is going to be co-creating with you as well, right? Are you in that state of yes, incredible things or, you know, calling them more negative things as well. So step one would be awareness, bringing awareness to any limiting beliefs that you might have and writing them down, right? Journaling is so powerful. So like you said, your manifestation journal, love it. That's amazing. And every day, just like write them out and like, if you and do what you need to do to shift those, but like journaling and really reframing that belief, questioning it. Is this belief true? Is it really, really true? Byron Katie, I love her, the work, the four questions. She does ask me you know, too. If question. Yeah, question the belief. What is this belief like holding me back from? Or how do I react when I believe this, perceive this belief to be true? Who would I be without this belief? Like these are definitely powerful questions you can ask yourself. We can do different things like taking action is one of the best ways to shift a belief because you're actually showing your subconscious mind that you can do it and you are doing it. 
right? So it's like, oh, okay. And like, you're actually crushing that fear because you're like, I didn't die, which is what your subconscious, it's it's protecting you from that fear, right? It's that survival instinct. But when we take action, for instance, launch the retreat or show up on lives and promote it and talk about it, like it's the best thing since, you know, ever, like that's where really that magnetism and we're moving through that fear, whatever that might be there as well. So those are really incredible ways to start doing that. Okay. So, so yummy. Now, let me ask you this. I know that you're moving into holding space for others. And yeah. so that's what you're doing. Do you help retreat leaders though with their limiting beliefs? Is that something that you offer th- either through coaching or any programs or anything like that? Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, the women that I tend to work with naturally are more of those kind of conscious women who are in those spaces of of hosting retreats, of hosting events, of holding space. So a lot of the clients I've worked with have been women who have worked in the retreat space. And actually one of my clients, yeah, she she came forward. She's amazing. She's a yoga instructor bringing more yoga to like NHS workers because she was a nurse as well. And she was struggling a lot with limiting beliefs around confidence in her business and making it work. And after we worked together, she was selling out her retreats in two days. It was incredible. And she's gone on to, yeah, just have these amazing experiences with retreats and calling the aligned opportunities in her business as well. And it was because of those mindset shifts and like showing up as that different version of her and tapping into who is that version of you that has already achieved that success? How would you feel? How would you show up? What beliefs would you have? Become her now, the self-concept. Yeah. <laughs> if I knew how to sing, I would sing. Oh my gosh, yes. Hey guys, I'm popping in to ask a quick question. Are you ready to elevate your marketing game and fill those retreat slots faster than ever? Of course you are. That's why you're here. And we've got the toolkit for you. Our top five marketing tools for retreat leaders guide. This isn't just a guide. It's your marketing guru wrapped up in one easy to follow package. Dive into the essentials of social media marketing, where we show you how to leverage those platforms to create a community buzzing with excitement for your retreats. Also, unleash the power of content marketing with strategies that educate and engage your potential guests. Plus, we'll dive into email marketing, SEO, and partnership opportunities that open new doors and bring in streams of attendees. So why wait to make your retreats the talk of the town? Download your free guide today by visiting retreatmarketingtools.com and start transforming your retreat dreams into reality. So I will link anything you want me to in the show notes, but if you want to just shout out, like how could someone get a hold of you to start doing that work with you? Yeah, definitely. So I am on Instagram at Lorena.Christine. So it's L-O-R-I-N-A dot Christine. And then I'm also, my website is LorenaChristine.com. And I also host um, a podcast myself called Unleash Your Radiance, which is all around manifestation, mindset, overcoming limiting beliefs, spirituality, like entrepreneurship, all the fun things as well. And I've got some incredible mindset programs and and one-to-one work that we do as well. Perfect. And for those that are listening, it's Christine, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, not K-R-I-S. Anyway, so I don't want to confuse anybody, but it's the C-H. But thank you so much for being on the show. I will absolutely link all of that stuff in there. And thanks for these little tidbits, because like I said, I really do feel like mindset is the number one obstacle that retreat hosts face as they are trying to host their successful and transformational retreat. Definitely. And I actually have a free abundance track I'd be happy to leave your audience with as well that can really help them to rewire their mindset around any limiting beliefs as well. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show and maybe we'll get you back out here again. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a great conversation. Thanks for listening to the Retreat Leaders Podcast. Learn more at www.theretreatranch.com. See you next time.